Hi, Yarnabees, it's us. Hey. <laughs> we are at the Cowichan Christmas Chaos. Yeah, Christmas right? Chaos in Cowichan on Vancouver Island. We're getting set up. It's been a great morning so far. We've got more room than we thought we were going to have. So happy about that. We had hockey players helping us unload. Yeah, yeah, we had some student hockey players. That was great. Um, so everything's been going so smoothly already. I didn't sleep a wink last night because I was so freaked out thinking that, you know, I wasn't going to have enough room because this display here is ha like half of the display that we normally have. So, so here I'll show you. I'll flip this. So we're setting up our sweaters. This is the new um, spiral uh, rack that I got. So I'm hoping that that's going to work out well. And George is eating. <laughs> He's trying to get a bite in beforehand. So this is the amount of hats that we're able to show at a time, which is kind of a bummer, but it is what it is. Um, and it then we've got. Our favor, though, too, right? Yeah, yeah, Sometimes might might we work. Have too much stuff, right? Yeah, that's true. So in here, I'm going to have. I got a mannequin back here that I got to bring out. Um, I'll and probably put it over there and yeah, then a mannequin and a woman again. A woman again. <laughs> so then we're gonna set everything all up. So I will uh, I will come back and I will show you what this setup looks like when we're done. Okay. Okay, we're all set up. We're ready to go. Now I think I'm gonna go and actually take a look at all the other vendors. Here, I'll show you what I've got. Okay. Excuse the totes back there, but here's my stuff. I've got all of our scrubbies, headbands. These are bun covers. These are our hat and cowl sets. And then this is just a little bit of our hats. <laughs> We've got all those totes back there full of stuff still. And then I've got more totes back there. <laughs> so, so wish us luck. Hopefully this is going to be a good one. It's raining outside so maybe that'll bring people in. And look at this pretty tree right here. Isn't that pretty? Oh yeah, I forgot to show you this. You guys remember that? Yeah. So, okay, so I guess we will check in with you later. Hey everybody, so it's 2.30, everything opened at 12 o'clock, but we were here at 9.30. Um, we're doing okay, not that great, I mean, but it's just the first day, right? So, we're going to be here for three more days, yay. Back is already killing me. Oh. Um, yeah, George is trying his best. <laughs> so, oh. can't do it with the mask on. Yeah, we're having a real hard time with having the mask on because we can't see people, like their face and stuff, and it's really hard. I can already tell George is completely different than he normally would be because usually he's like hey and jovial and all this and he's not this year so but that's We're okay surrounded by honeys on the lake that's the yeah. problem <laughs> yeah there's a guy here selling honey and uh yeah he, <laughs> he kind of takes the show so george has got competition <laughs> anyways i'll touch base with you and let you know how we're doing later okay day two of the craft fair. Um, feel like I've been hit by a Mack truck. It's, uh, <laughs> I woke up this morning and I could barely get out of bed from head to toe pain. It was, it was crazy. So I had a hot bath, talked to my bestie, Sandy Duda from Left is Right. 
and uh, I feel better. I feel a lot better. So I'm still hurting like a, <clears throat> yeah, but uh, I'm hoping that I'm going to make smarter choices today. Yes, I'm going to wear better shoes. <laughs> I've got my hair up. Uh, that was helping. I was sweating so bad last night. <clears throat> um, I'm wearing a different top today, so it's got some holes in it, and it's uh, going to be a little more airy. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think my shoes did me in. I I can't wear shoes with any kind of a heel on them. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the boots I was wearing had just a smidge of a heel. That was enough to throw me off. Um, so I'm going to take a pillow today because those chairs did not do me any favors. Um, what else? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it was, it was a good night or a good day. Uh, but we were there for like 10 hours. Uh, this, the fair didn't open until 12 o'clock from 12 to 7, but we were there at 9.30 setting up. So, long day. At least today, we don't have to be there till um, uh, 11.30. So, we have just, <clears throat> excuse me, coffee, morning coffee stuff. Creamer. You think I'd learn anyway uh so yeah so we'll let's see how today goes hopefully it's just as good as yesterday or better it's supposed to amp up now being a friday uh i'm sure that it won't really amp up until people are off work but um and then tomorrow is apparently going to be crazy so we'll see how it goes um I, there was a guy there oh my goodness you guys I, oh, hang on oh. <laughs> Um, there was a guy there yesterday. He's going to be there all weekend, I think. He had, oh, I couldn't believe it. He had butterflies and bugs under glass or under like in a frame. And the stuff he had, he had bats. Considering how COVID started, I'm a little surprised that he had those out, but, um, <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, he had centipedes. He had um, uh, a whole bunch of different types of butterflies. He had beetles. He had scorpions. He, you name it, he had it. And they're all from um, like the rainforest and uh, Brazil and like all all over the world. And he's a botanist. Arachnophobic. Uh, nah. Anyway, he's a bug guy. And he gets these, these um, <clears throat> animal or, or insects and stuff. And, uh, and has them in frames. There was a tranch, couple tarantulas there. I almost died. George says, I should get one of those for Christmas. And I says, not if you want to live. <laughs> like, a no not happening so um yeah so my sister bought a scorpion for her husband uh and i got a bug for my daughter tia and her boyfriend for christmas because uh, i i told her i says oh my gosh tia you should see this like it's insane she says i'd be down for that i was like really uh okay and let me tell you they were not cheap so, but I got her one, George, well, I didn't get it. George got it. So it's a gift from George to them for Christmas. And it's huge. It's like a seven, six or seven inch bug. Uh, so, um, I don't know if Tia's going to watch this. So, <laughs> so I, I can't show it yet, but I will show it at some point. Um, uh, um, yeah. Uh, itchy nose so anyways okay so let's see how today goes uh, I'm gonna take some painkillers before we leave and let's hope for the best this is not the saddest dog ever she's so upset that we're going 
Right, Bailey? Hey, puppy, say hello. Oh, she's so sad. Whenever we go to anywhere for a length of time, she goes and gets all mopey like this. She's just not a happy camper. Okay, so we're here. We're, it's five minutes in. We're gonna open the doors. And when I got here, something really funny happened. I asked George this morning to put a cash box in my bag. And I opened my bag and guess what I found? <laughs> uh, so obviously <laughs> he accidentally put one of his socks in there too <laughs> thank god it's a clean sock <laughs> but uh, I said geez maybe we should put a face on it and do sock puppets well you know for customers <laughs> so oh my god it's gonna be a crazy day I can feel it <laughs> Hi, yarn bees. So we are oh, hot mess here. We have three more hours to the second day, and we're doing good. We're uh, tired, sore, <laughs> but we're actually doing really well. Say, say hi, George. Yes. <laughs> so um, yeah. So tomorrow we start at ten in the morning and go till five five yeah five o'clock so but yeah it's been really good I'm not in as much pain right now as I was before but uh, yeah George got me some sangria for tonight yeah because uh, I could have used it last night guys I was just I was in so much pain so um, but yeah so I'll keep you posted on how it's going and and uh, yeah, we're talking about selling each other's products um, as it goes at craft fairs, right? So, okay, I will talk to you guys in a little while. Okay. Makes the hat, I think. I like the logo. Yes. Yeah. So, then you know it's a real crochet a hat because otherwise. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
it. We're probably just going to work the full straight uh, six hours without eating anything and then pack up and go home. And we got yeah. some leftover dinner from last night. We stopped at our favorite chicken place. And yeah. uh, we'll have some of that when we get home and get the yep. flyer going and get everything out of the van and into the office again before next weekend. Yeah, start crocheting where, all over again. Where we're really hoping that we don't get really bad weather because we are outside underneath yeah. the tent so yeah it's a, well, yeah it's the snow is coming down the mountain <laughs> yeah. very you know and then uh in how far away is um Shawnigan? oh Shawnigan is only about uh 20 minutes from duncan where our craft fair is so they've got yeah. But they often get snow there when there's not snow in Duncan because I think it's a bit of an elevation thing and they're they're down by the lake. So it's not unusual for Sean again to get uh, a ton of snow and then not very much in Duncan. But it's creeping down the mountain. We can see it. It's getting closer. Uh, I do have to get snow tires put on my van. I yes, usually he does. I wait every year till sort of the first real signs of winter and then I get them put on. and. Normally I just keep them on. I don't take them off and put the other tires on because as always with my vans, I I buy my sort of uh, beater junker vans that I use for work and drive them till I kill them. So I never know if it's going to last more than another year when I get the tires. So I usually just keep the snow tires on. And I'll often get maybe two or three winters out of a pair of snow tires before I have to change them because they're not worn down too much. So we'll see how it goes. So there you go, you got your fill of crochet bee that you guys been asking for. Oh, yeah. Wasn't it just eventful? <laughs> hey, we had a yarn bee show up and get actual photos. <laughs> yeah, so it was, it was really nice. Um, yeah, so my, my arm's about to fall off because I've been holding it up this long, so we're so, going to go. Yeah, good morning, Janice. It was nice to meet you yesterday. And, yeah, uh, so uh, we will talk to you guys soon. We will let you know how it goes. Wish us luck. Okay, bye guys. We've been after craft fair now for three and a half days and we just discovered something. How does Kermit the Frog like to pay for everything? Debit, debit, debit. <laughs> Hi, Hi Arnaby. <laughs> <laughs> so we're doing, this is our post uh, craft fair video. We survived a four day craft fair. Yeah. Uh, what a marathon. So it was very, very good. Um, we've heard for many years from our, uh, cra not our yarny friends, our crafty friends, of course, you get to meet a lot of the same people over the years, that this one particular craft fair, which is called Christmas Chaos in Duncan, was kind of the Super Bowl of craft fairs. And this is the one you need to go in. And people have been telling us. And Sandy's always been um, a little resistant. It is more expensive than... Uh, most of the other ones that we do, but I think the big thing is the fact that it is four days. Um, it's okay, you can put your arm. And out. it is, uh, it's it's <laughs> it's, it, it's incredibly <laughs> exhausting to stand and craft for four days. It's amazing. I can clean mm -hmm. uh, carpets all day long, and I'm nowhere near as tired as when I stand and I sell Sandy stuff for the whole day because Sandy yeah. just sits there and makes me do all the work. Uh, um, what? <laughs> Anyway, who does um, all the work before? <laughs> yeah, Sandy yeah. does all the crocheting and I do all the selling. Um, oh, by the way, this is brought to you by What's in Our Cup. So we are we're celebrating. So Sandy has sangria and I have some whiskey and ginger ale yep. because we have never made uh, more money in a craft fair ever than this craft fair. It's probably the equivalent of what we would have done in uh, four of the other craft fairs that we do um, in the school. So um Yay! we're very very grateful obviously we're going to go in it again next year uh we were scheduled to do one this weekend but unfortunately we weren't able to get a space inside we'd have to be outside with our little uh yeah. our little tent and it's supposed to be raining and windy and blowing we've had about 600 inches of rain here <laughs> um in bc and we've literally had highways washed yeah. out um, if you've ever, if you've yeah. seen the news, I'm sure. That yeah, they're they calling probably... it an atmospheric river, yeah. which is uh, something I've never heard of before. And it's all proof that climate change is happening and we're all going to die and Oops. COVID and whatever. <laughs> it's all the same kind of bullshit. But anyway, we've actually had like a huge sinkhole, which literally cut us off yeah. from Parksville 
um, north of us for about three or four days. Um, I actually had to go there today, but I got through it because it had been fixed. So kind of like that new show, La Brea. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I went over the sinkhole, but there was no dinosaurs or anything that I saw. Um, so anyway, it was interesting because Sandy, um, for the first time, like. for the first time ever, we had Sandy sweaters that she's been making. We've always been known uh, mm. for selling hats at the fairs, mm -hmm. and we've had we had several people come up at the fair that recognized us from years gone by for hats, yeah. people that had bought hats from us in the past. Uh, you which, can talk, I'll just sit here and drink. Yeah, <laughs> which is always really nice. Um, and the funniest part of the whole thing was um, Sandy had one of the uh, her subscribers show up yeah, and was just like gushing and like, oh my God, it's actually Sandy. And, and <laughs> she had, she, she, quite gushing. she had to get like a selfie with Sandy. No, and, that was, I asked her if she wanted a picture. And then she had to get a picture of Crochet A and Crochet B like in the <laughs> flesh live in their crafting habitat, which was actually really <laughs> funny. Uh, but we never, the funny thing is we never sold any of Sandy's sweaters in the first two days. No. Um, and, and she was like, so depressed. Like she was, she was not, there was, she was pricing them basically from $40 and up. So really they were quite reasonably priced. Yeah. Um, and she was like, oh my God, I worked so hard and nobody likes them. Nobody wants to, nobody <laughs> wants to buy them. <laughs> exactly. Right. And then I, I almost thought I wasn't going to make sweaters anymore. <laughs> and then we sold like 10 or 12 of them on, on Saturday. <laughs> like they all bought them on Saturday. And then we were looking, um, we actually had like, like almost no sweaters in the rack and, and bare spots on all the tables. It's like, holy crap, we we're almost out of stuff. And then, um, went down in the basement and I found another tote down there we opened it up and it was full of sweaters. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so we brought them for Sunday and we sold more on Sunday. So, um, yeah. anyway, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was really interesting because the set the setup for the craft fair was kind of bizarre it's like there was off to the side was three little rooms and that's where we were and then you go off to the the other side and you have to go down a long hallway to get to the far end of the building to get to the main hall and then you go upstairs and you have to go the whole distance of the building down different corridors to get to another room. This building has got to be at least 100,000 square feet. It, like it's, it was insane. It's a huge hockey arena, rec center, convention yeah. center. Um, we actually don't have anything really to compare it to in Nanaimo. It's like, no. it would be like the equivalent of our hockey rink, our convention center, and every and two or three other buildings all put together. So it's, um, yeah. but actually when Sandy told me we were in, in one of the smaller rooms, I was actually a little disappointed. I thought that nobody would come in uh, to the small room, but actually we were close mm -hmm. to the entrance. So most people came to us first. Yeah. Um, well, there was two entrances. Yeah. There was one at the main hall and then there was one on our side. And the main hall has like, like a hundred tables in there of different people. Mm -hmm. So when you walk in there, it's like, you're looking at like, it's like ring. It's like a Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. There's like ten <laughs> things all. Yeah. It's, it's just sensory overload. Yeah. Um, so it, it's really hard for you to even talk to anybody. It's very loud. But in our room, it was actually really nice. People mm -hmm. could come up and you could actually talk with with a mask on, of course, yeah. which we hated. We hated wearing the mask oh, the whole that time. That mask, I swear. Was but kill but, me. I mean, last year we did a craft fair and it was very. Very uh, heavy-duty COVID protocol. Mm -hmm. It wasn't only the mask, but people weren't even allowed to come within three feet of your table. No one was yeah. touching or, or feeling anything. It wasn't like that. Even though people were ma had masks, they were able to tar try things on and a lot were of very people, friendly. I found a lot of people, though, when, when we said, you know, touch, feel, try on, they were like, oh, really? Yeah. I'm, I'm allowed? They're still, you know, so you know learning that, you know, yeah. Um, it's okay. I won't say it's over, <laughs> but I mean, hopefully we're moving on to the point that we can at least communicate and, yeah. and be able to interact and everything. Yeah. So, um, but no, it went, I, I don't think we could have asked for anything better other crazy. than the fact that it was just like absolutely exhausting by the end of every day, like Sandy could barely move I was uh, so with her back. Pain. And my back was actually quite sore too. We'd get yeah. home and I'd get in the hot tub and 
you know, have 10 or 12 whiskeys and then I'd feel better. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. And Sandy, Sandy would have a hot, I'd have to give her a hot bath at night and give her a hot bath in the morning yeah. to, yeah, to he, get her going. He'd make me a, a hot bath in the morning and then he would come wake me up and I'd kind of. <laughs> zombie out zombie to the out. tub while I went into the hot tub. Um, you know, take a few painkillers. But we and... made it. We made it work, and we yeah. worked together, and it was it was really good. Yeah. But obviously, we're going to have to make sure we have a lot of stock made because oh, we sold God. a lot of stuff. So and here I thought that you know having seven totes like yeah. big totes. Yeah, I figured having that much was going to be way too much. It was going to cover both the the craft fairs. Well, yeah. and the challenge will be for next year. Um, we kind of got late into. I mean, we've had two years of COVID and no craft fairs. Yeah. Um, a lot of the craft fairs didn't know right up until almost the last minute they were even going to do the craft fair. Yeah. So um, we weren't able to apply and get into some of them. And a lot of them were, were still COVID protocol, have to be double vaxxed in order to do the craft fairs. And uh, we're not vaccinated. Um, <laughs> but but uh, this one, it's it's funny because the laws... The actual law for craft fairs from our health authority is that the vendors don't actually have to be vaccinated. We're considered the same category as a retail worker, like in a store in the mall. So if you go by the actual law, um, we were totally fine as long as we masked up and everything. But um, as a lot of you probably know, people are kind of making up their own rules around COVID and a lot of people are asking for uh, vaccine passes, even when they're not required and stuff. So the challenge next year, obviously, who knows what's going to happen with the world, the way things are going, it's different every week. It would be lovely if it was all over. Um, but if not, we're going to have to find out what craft fairs are available. What can we actually go in that will allow us to participate, um, and try to get it lined up. It would be nice to do, you know, four or five next year, but of course, Sandy's got to get crocheting right away. Yeah, well, okay. well, we're definitely going to do on this that. one. Um, <laughs> they were quite happy with us. They wanted to know for sure if we were going to be back. And we said, absolutely. And we'd like to have exactly the same space if that's possible. Mm -hmm. So we're going to work on that. So if we get in that one and even two or three others, that would be a very good, I think, season. <laughs> the problem is a lot of them are on the same weekend. And yeah, you, you have to kind thing. of figure out which ones mm -hmm. you want to go in that will be successful that you'll be able yeah. to sell that will allow you to participate and and all of that so because yeah, we had to give up a craft fair to go into this one yeah right? yeah and there's uh you know and then the one we were going to go into the exhibition this weekend and there's uh one in qualicum the same weekend which is another yeah. part of the island that may have might have been good as well so yeah. we're definitely going to have to uh hello julia sending an attachment <laughs> um we're definitely going to have to pick and choose and kind of figure out what we can do. And Sandy will have to get on it. Like you literally, you got to book this stuff in like, you know, June, July and August in order to get your yeah. spot. And there's, there's more and more crafters all the time that are doing this and trying to get in and, and do things. So the nice thing with this one, because um, like it was $200 for the table for the weekend. So there wasn't a lot of crocheters. And when we go in some of the school ones, um, quite often there's like 10 or 12 crocheters because it's fairly cheap to get in there. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of competition and they hate us because Sandy's stuff is... Well, is our setup is... Our setup is... Is a lot bigger. Honestly, Sandy's stuff is, is superior quality to everybody in any... Know. It is, in any craft fair <laughs> we go... Sandy stuff is definitely the nicest made and the nicest stuff. I paid them to say that. Maybe not. Ne <laughs> no, it's true. Maybe not necessarily the cheapest, um, but also not outrageous either. So we've had lots of fairs where we've shown up and there's been other crocheters and we're selling tons because she's got this guy selling for her and shit. He's really good at selling <laughs> stuff. Um, and, uh, and her stuff is really nice. Uh, so we're always getting the stink eye from the other crocheters who just hate us. We're like the, the Borg yeah. showing up. It's like, well, it's oh like my that, God. Like that one year we had a display that took up two eight, but eight foot tables full of hats. And it was four 
tiers yeah, tall? Yeah, four? like almost 50 hats in our display. So plus four, four tiers or three tiers well, yeah. tall. So we had like 25 hats on one stand and 25 on the other. Like it was a massive uh, display so it's like when you go in there and you've got that massive display with christmas lights and everything people's jaws kind of drop and they go oh uh oh <laughs> and then we we had our big banner crochet a and yeah you know like when i was making scooties we had the banner that said home of the scooty you know and stuff like that and uh so yeah people kind of went oh uh oh she's, big she's gonna be a problem big strapping good-looking guy selling the stuff <laughs> um and and guy. and shy like really shy like was, <laughs> was totally not willing to call people over and um you know oh yeah so. that's totally him yeah. but you know the funny thing is like in our where we were this year we had um we had another guy in there he was selling honey oh. and he was even more full of shit than i was <laughs> like, uh, you would think the simplest display a table <laughs> with jars of honey that's all it was and uh this guy lives in in uh Misachi lake so um Misachi lake is just north of duncan there's a large lake called lake cowichan and then there's this two smaller lakes so he has so he had he has hives in uh lake cowichan hives in Misachi lake and hives in honeymoon bay and literally these places are not even five miles apart. <laughs> and he's trying to convince people that each one is totally distinctive and different from the others. And this is Masachi Lake Honey. And it's, it's my favorite. And it's way better than this one. <laughs> and he was so full of shit, but he had everybody believe in stuff. And actually we bought a honeycomb <laughs> from him. So uh, we're going to be doing another video where um, he actually sells not only the honey, but actually a piece of the honeycomb with the honey. Um, <laughs> and you're supposed to like, you know, literally take a chunk of honeycomb and, and eat it. So yeah, we're going to do a video where we're doing the honeycomb <laughs> challenge, I guess. But yeah. this guy was like, people would come in and he was, hey, honey's by the lake, he would say. They kept looking for the girls, but there was no girls. It was just <laughs> jars of honey, right? Honey's by the lake. And he goes, this is honeymoon bay on display and this is Masachi <laughs> lake make no mistake and he had all these sayings and but you know what that guy sold a shit ton of honey he did like we were <laughs> i think like we were thinking that we probably looking at there's about six of us i guess in the room all together i'm pretty sure we probably sold the most yeah. out of everybody but if we didn't then the honey guy definitely did because that guy had yeah. you know Honey, and so he started with this huge table and it kept getting smaller and smaller. And in the end, he could have had like a, a little TV tray <laughs> with, with the jars of honey that he had left. But, uh, yeah. and we learned more about honey from this guy than we ever want to know in our mm -hmm. lifetime. Yeah. All about, you know, how it's made and what it does yeah. and how they milk the little bees and, yeah. and all the stuff. <laughs> how but, you uh, milk the bees. But, uh, <laughs> you know, like, I, I don't know, whatever. But, uh, <laughs> you don't milk bees. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway. but the nice thing is like you know like when <laughs> when you get there in the beginning you know everybody's kind of little little you know like this uh but you know by the by the first day we'd all yeah. kind of bonded and at the end we all were hoping that we would all be in the same room again uh, for well, next year soap lady. except well we had a soap lady that was a oh I, a bit of a pain yeah, in the butt ski. I, I, I wanted to throat punch some people there. Well, <laughs> she, she came up to Sandy and Sandy had her, had scrubbies that she makes and we sell them for two bucks, yeah. um, which, which is cheap. And she said, you could easily be getting $5 for these. And so she said, um, would you be okay if I bought all your scrubbies off, off no, of you? No, she said, you? how would you feel? How would you feel if I bought all your yeah. scrubbies and then resold them on my table uh, for, for for more money for five dollars. And Sandy looked I at just her looked at like, her like um, "Excuse me." She goes, "Well, then why wouldn't you go and and sell them for five dollars when somebody else can come along and yeah. scoop them up and buy them all and and then resell them?" And she was one of these, you know, everybody that came in. <laughs> she she had this whole like, uh, you know, oh, just I, so you know, like they didn't really see if they wanted to know but just so you know all of our our soap is ethically sourced you know 
Like there's all like friend, like there's all these unethical you know soap people running around. <laughs> well, you never um, know. There uh, might be <laughs> ethically sourced and and vegan, because God knows you don't want to have any meat in your soap. <laughs> I don't, but know. Vegan, I don't know what this means, vegan, he, and and, he was just all and that, all na vegan. naturally what whatever. I go, what is that? I want some chicken soap. I want some <laughs> beef soap. Where's my steak soap? Like, what is this? But she was just like, that ah, and she, you know, and they actually were like, we'd have people looking at Sandy's sweater rack, and they would actually um, almost steal them yeah. uh, to come over and look at their soap a couple of times. Which was, you know, was kind of pissing me off a little bit, but... Um, well, you're going to get that at any craft fair, though. You know, it's going to be dog-eat-dog, dog, and it's going to be, you know, uh, everybody's trying to make money, and some people just aren't ethical, <laughs> you know? But and, the soap was ethical. Yeah. <laughs> the soap was ethical, was, <laughs> was ethical, but she wasn't, I guess, so... <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it was, well. But the the lady on the other side of us, uh, she was great. You know, she had her own artwork and she made earrings out, out of her artwork. Like she shrunk it down to yeah. make earrings and ornaments and everything. And uh, it was it was pretty amazing. Yeah. Like, no, to see all in talent. all, it was actually a, a pretty good group. Yeah. And even people just outside the door um, that we knew, the guys that were making the wooden signs and things like that. And because it was our first time there we were trying to determine like um is was is this typical of how this goes um because you know obviously with covid mm -hmm. things are things are changed but basically the general consensus was this was kind of sort of how it usually is yeah. a lot less vendors this year they're probably yeah. down about 50 vendors because there are um crafters that are still hiding under their bed and won't come out and actually craft during covid um well they so... they were trying to do the six feet apart for the tables but I mean, they weren't, they weren't. We were but, far enough away. You know, Everybody that had, all the people that went to the fair had to be double vaccinated yeah. and they were checking that. So it, it would only be the odd vendor that wasn't. And um, everybody still had to wear their mask and you were far enough yeah. away. So really, yeah. you know, it, it, I'm sure it was fine. But the best part of the whole weekend was when we got a visit from a subscriber named Joanne and her story um, some of you may know her uh, Joanne Jack she's in some lives um, she makes comments on people's videos um, so she's one of the community yeah she's one of the community but she's she lives here she lives in Duncan where we were doing the craft fair she's had an extremely rough year extremely um they had it was all over the news and in the newspapers but she had a massive house fire and there was eight people that lived in the house i think it yeah, was yeah um <clears throat> and i think it was uh a five-year-old boy was still in the house and i believe it was an uncle that went into the house braved the fire to get him out yeah they had a chimney fire one of the kids yeah. woke up and yeah. and basically woke the, everybody five up years old. and everybody got out of the house but the one little boy was stuck in there yeah um and the uncle went and got him out and the, the yeah. boy was badly burned and sadly he passed away a few days later so this poor lady yeah. like she lost her house she lost everything yeah, yeah she lost her grandson yeah. so um uh, uh tank and tank so yeah. is it tank, tank sullivan susan sullivan her, susan she sullivan goes she tank. goes by tank um she's yeah. um one of the so she organized a group of yeah. gals um because this woman's only like a lot of you her um solace is her crochet it helps her get through her difficulties um so um the girls all donated and uh sandy went and bought like two ginormous yeah, santa claus bags full of uh, yarn for yeah, her tank got a hold um, of me and asked me if i could do this because i lived so close and i said absolutely right because she sent me the the paper the newspaper article of it and in the article it did not say that the child had passed and it, <clears throat> what it was is he loved hot wheels cars and he lost them all in the fire and he was in the hospital 
and the story went out in the news and people were sending him these cars and he had over 500 cars sent to him so he got to see them and then he passed yeah and yeah. it was Sad. just heart-wrenching to read this and then <clears throat> um so I went, I went shopping and I got this yarn and I got a card and I put all the names of the people that had donated and whatnot. Yep. And, uh, <clears throat> and then Joanne came and picked up this stuff. She had no idea. So I presented it to her, bawled my eyes out. Yeah. George says no crying. And as soon as he said that, the floodgates no crying up. at craft fairs. We're trying yeah. to sell shit. And people are coming up trying to buy stuff and sending yeah, he's, bawling. And he's trying to deal with the customers. I'm trying to sell to stuff. These two are over here bawling in the I'm corner. Just like, and... <laughs> it was like, I just could not contain myself. You know, as soon as I saw her, I gave her a big hug. You know, COVID protocol be damned. I was going to give this woman a hug. Yeah. And um, yeah. I... Uh, I spoke with her for a little bit and then she told me that she had another uh, family member pass away recently. <sighs> so uh. anyway, so I'm going to insert a picture here of um, the bag, the yarn that I had given her. And um, I'm also down below in the description box. I am going to put a link to the GoFundMe uh, that she has, um, that one of her family members or friends had made for her. Um, they're trying to rebuild their house. And um, yeah, so I, and I might be able to uh, link the actual story of what happened. Yeah. Wow. Well, so I mean, if you were interested it's horrible. in looking at A lot of bad things seem to happen around Christmas time, yeah. which is always really sad. And yeah. I know that, you know, many of you have, have had things and we all, you know, we're doing our best to get through the world here. But yeah, Christmas you is know, the hardest. Boy oh boy, people. like this poor gal. Yeah. And she was just overwhelmed with, with what uh, we gave her. Um and then of course I had to carry everything all out <laughs> to her car. Um she, she she has like two walking sticks. She's coming in, and she's yeah. just so another George, George, says, another, another broken no. another no. broken crocheter, which there seems to be yeah. so many of. Yeah. So I carried so. all this out for her, and uh, and yeah. got her in her car, and off she went. So yeah. and uh, she said she would hopefully post uh, something on somewhere to yeah, show she, show some she, of what she's made or yeah, she or was, what she's uh, doing. She so. was on a Zoom chat. Um, I'll see if I can link that down below as well, where she actually opened up everything on camera. I haven't had a chance yet to look at it. Um, but Are you just going to start crying? All I know. Again? <laughs> start but, watching uh, that. Yeah, so I'm really glad that I got a chance to do that for her. Well, she was supposed to come on uh, Saturday, and then, she, and then, and then she, she wasn't able to make it. So then we were worried, like, man, because we had all this yarn yeah. sitting there. We were hoping that she was going to be able to come by, but she got by on Sunday and we got yeah, it done. Yeah, so. if she wasn't going to be able to come by, then we were going to We would have delivered it, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. So, um, yeah, so thank you so much, Joanne, for, for taking the time to come and meet with me uh, because that was a really special moment for me. And uh, I'm so glad that I was able to help. So thank you, Tank, for yeah, contacting me yeah. and having me get involved with this so yeah and we're not alone we know you're we know you're all out there and we're here for you too yeah and uh you know we try hard to be there for the community you know and as much as you guys are here for us you know and especially at this time of year christmas is a really tough time for a lot of people you know um like my mom passed away three days before Christmas, four days before Christmas. So, um, it's always really hard on me. Um, so Grinch. Yeah. yeah. Christmas yeah, Grinch. I, yeah. I, I don't do Christmas well. And I love Christmas yeah. and she's just always like, Argh. yeah, so. it just brings up bad stuff yeah. for me. So, but I try, I try for him Yes. and, uh, I get through it. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so anyways, it's, um, just, just know that we are here for you guys. We are thinking about you. We are sending you love, uh, in the holiday season 
and um yeah so i guess that's about it i guess not much else to say <laughs> yeah. um watch for our honeycomb video yeah. <laughs> yeah, i honeycomb. don't really know if i even really want to try this <laughs> but uh <laughs> Uh, you're going to it's going to be I really to, sweet you have to oh this guy was you know he was so full of crap it was like <laughs> this is you know you'll never have anything like this it's oh, ambrosia yeah. from the gods and oh, you'll yeah. grow six inches right after you eat it and <laughs> yeah, god he damn trying to, he's trying to say that you know when you eat a piece of honeycomb it's the best experience that you'll ever have yeah and you'll never yeah, forget it. And yeah i'm going yeah, yeah i bet yeah <laughs> like, and i says well it's wax it's like what do you do with it? he says you can swallow it you well know? and i'm like he says you can, you can eat, eat the it. actual wax part or you yeah, can just suck out all the honey and spit the wax out i'm just like um uh, and then the, the but he sold a lot of these the things. lady beside us bought some and got her two kids her kids had to have been like five and se or yeah, seven and yeah, whatever yeah. and the little boy took a bite and he's like mm, mm, mm. <laughs> He's like, mm. he looks at his mom and goes, mm -mm. kept him kept him quiet for a while. <laughs> He's though. just like, <laughs> and the daughter's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I just I laughed and I thought, oh crap, we got to do this. <laughs> so Sandy said, we got to do this. Got to do the honeycomb the honeycomb challenge. Yep. So it well, I'm be sure fun. you've seen in the past. We've done the the candy bar oh, thing yeah. and. Other things over the over the <laughs> yep, years, I so, guess. So we'll so we're gonna do it. We'll we'll do it. <laughs> so watch for that in the next week or so. <laughs> so, anyways, guys, thanks for joining us. Thanks for coming along on our crafting chaos journey. Christmas whatever. chaos, yeah. <laughs> and, no, it and, was uh, it was really good, and you know, um, you never know what to believe because everybody always talks about. This whatever craft fair you don't go in was of course the best one in the history of craft fairs. Yeah. And everybody made ten thousand dollars and you should have <laughs> went and yeah. you know, you never know what to believe with all this stuff and but yeah. this was actually the real deal. It was very well run. Um the people that go there definitely are there to buy stuff and not just look yeah. uh there's not a lot of looky loo in going around. They they basically know what they want. You know, they maybe might have looked a bit on the and and people actually did come back when they said, "Oh, I'm going to come back." Yeah. Um, usually, like we have this thing in craft fairs. We, you know, they always say we're going to go round, and the round is this mysterious place that's that's <laughs> like the twilight zone. And when everybody goes into the round, they never come back. So <laughs> one day I'm going to write like a a Stephen King sort of short story called The Round, where the people disappear. Yeah. <laughs> so, because we always hear, we're just going to go round, and then round is not a circle, because they never, ever come back. They just yeah. gone. So, yeah. anyway. Um, but this, there were some people that actually came out of the round, and they actually did come back and buy stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah it, was it was interesting. Nice. It was nice. So, anyways, I, I'm going to... Sign off now, I guess. Okay. So before George really talks your ear off. <laughs> yeah, sorry, guys. I don't get out much. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Okay, so we will talk to you guys later, and we'll, we'll see. Well, they were complaining they hadn't seen me for a well, while, so true. there you go. <laughs> so we'll see you in the next video. Okay, okay. guys. Bye. Bye.